Hey everyone, welcome to season two, episode two of the unofficial official story. I'm Jennifer and I'm hangry right now because I'm on my 22nd hour of a 24 hour fast. Hey guys, I'm Dwayne. I guess I haven't eaten yet today, if that counts for anything, but I am drinking, so I'm obeying my thirst. And I am Koji and I am waiting for lunch. <laughs> This is a podcast where we tell you the official story. We're going to look at the paranormal, conspiracies, unexplained phenomena, cryptids, and true crime. And by the end, we'll tell you what really maybe happened. In this episode, we're asking the question, are the gray aliens the best because they're Asian? (laughs) But first, let's meet our guest, Comedian Aiden Park. Hi, Whoa, Aiden. Thank you. Woo-hoo! Asian comedian. I'm an Asian. I sound I sound not Asian, but I'm Asian. Uh-huh. Is that what people say? They're like, you don't sound Asian. Yeah, everybody's always surprised. They're like, oh, uh, I sound like a you know a, a white guy from Connecticut. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they are largely wrong because you're originally from South Korea, but obviously you live in the States now and you are Los Angeles based. Yes. You are a stand up comedian. I know that you're a best selling author and you're a creator or the creator of the brand, um, The Art of Being Yay, which is a best selling book. It's an OMG. NSFW Memoir and Guide to Authentic Joy. It was published in 2020. It invites the audience into the juicy details of your personal life, right? So it begins with Aiden's turbulent childhood in Korea, his HIV diagnosis at age 19, and ends with the loss of his husband to cancer. In the book, And via his comedy, he implements coping skills gleaned from his 15 plus years of study in the field of empowerment. And he's been seen in TV, film, Comedy Central, Hulu, CBS, appeared in over 30 national commercials, 30 theatrical productions, and headlines major comedy clubs, universities, and corporate events across the country. Oh my gosh, you are so accomplished. (laughs) And I would be remiss not to mention the fact that he was featured on the second season of my show, the one that I produced called Comedy Invasion 2.0. Point oh, which premiered this month on Peacock. So if you're out there, please, please, please take a listen to his 30 minutes. It's hilarious. I wanted to know, Aiden, when was the last time you were in Korea and do you have a fan base there? I don't think so. I mean, <laughs> Koreans, Koreans don't really like openly gay people. They're so conservative, right? Yeah, they're super conservative. And uh, so the last time I was there when I was nine years old uh, was when I was nine years old. Korea is great if you're straight. <laughs> you can really build a fan base there, but if you're gay, good luck. So, um, <laughs> although, you know, the BTS boys, I mean, come on. I'm <laughs> right. uh, no, I'm <laughs> no. So, yeah, that's what I would say. But, um, you know, there is a, a Korean um, underground kind of gay culture building. So that so I'm, I'm happy about that. Yeah, I guess it's a super Christian for the most part, right? Like, it, I think Christianity is the number one religion in Korea, I think. Yeah, I was born into... Okay, do you know what Baptists, like... Okay, like, you know what Baptists do? Like, they, like, oh, yeah. uh, believe, like... Yeah, okay, do I... <laughs> <laughs> like, they believe in the rapture, and so everybody goes away. So I, I was born into a Baptist family. I knew I was gay when I was, like, four. And I would go to church, and they'd be like, gays are going to hell. And everybody's good is going to get taken up. And those who are going to hell are going to be left behind. So from the age of like, I'm not even kidding, like four till whatever. Every day I woke up, I was like, I'm going to go to hell. And I'm going to, my parents are going to be gone. Like, it was crazy. It's a lot of pressure for a four Yeah, that's how you end up with the stand-up comedian. <laughs> right, right. Exactly, exactly. We said earlier, before we started recording, we used to live so close to each other. And we've hung out before. I know you used to make giant bubbles. I think I remember that about you at like yeah. functions and kids parties. Yeah. I don't know if you still do that. What did you learn from that? What did what do you miss about it? Has that experience shaped your comedy at all? Yeah. So uh, I make giant bubbles at children's parties, guys. Like so like I mean I don't currently do it now. Right. I train people to do it. Oh nice, you know? nice. I didn't know uh, you still. Yeah. yeah. I'm like a bubble conglomerate. <laughs> and I teach people how to make bubbles. I'm like a bubbly person so it kind of makes sense. <laughs> anyway, um so <laughs> Yes, because I've done over, I would say, I counted. So I would do, let's say, five bubble shows a week. That's 250 bubble shows a year. I did um, 10 years of bubbles. So that's 2,500 shows, okay? Wow. 
And at 2,500 shows, like th- that's like a thousand hours of, you know how that's a thousand hours of mastery? Right, you right. You talk to those kids the same way you talk to drunk people at bars. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> you have to figure out a way to get people to follow direction without offending them. And so as a comic, I think, I, I know Koji, like for, for our set, like I had to like not do audience work because, you know, but I'm a real audience work comedian. I love that. I like messing. So my whole thing is like, yeah, like you talk to them, like you talk to a three-year-old in a non-offensive way and you know how to build rapport. It totally helps. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. That's, that's, that's so cool. And how did you get into that? Did someone recruit you? Did you just wake up one day and say, I'll make bubbles? <laughs> <laughs> I was a waiter because I was, you know, acting. And this was even before I started stand-up. Uh-huh. I was such a bad waiter. I don't have an eye for details. I'm clumsy. I bump into things. I forget. And I'm loud and I'm clunky, like all those things that are mm. terrible for the table, <laughs> but great for bubbling, like, you know, for performing arts. So I was like, so finally, after getting fired from my like third waiting table job, I was like, all right, let's try something else. So it was actually an act of desperation, which really worked out for me. That's really cool. Yeah. Man. So. Aiden, well, um, we know you wrote this amazing book, The Art of Being Yay. Why don't you tell me the number one tenet that we should, that people who are listening should take away from your book? The number one piece of advice that I would say is to resourcing ways to get your emotional needs met is very important. So if you really think about it, uh, you know, I actually researched happiness because I, uh, Dwayne's met my, uh, uh, you know, husband who p- passed away. Mm. I was very much in love with him. He passed away. I was like, I better figure out how to be happy. That's it. And so I started researching happiness. And in my research, I found that it, it turns out that at the end of the day, anything we want is because there's an emotional result at the end of it. So you might want money because you might want power or safety or security or whatever that is at the end of on the other side of that thing you want to get, right? Like mm-hmm. a, an Oscar would make me feel a sense of significance or whatever. Michael made me feel a sense of security, comfort, or whatever. So if you look at things that way and you focus on, okay, so how can I foster those emotional tones that are significant to me? So I want to foster safety. I want to foster security. I want to foster comfort. But I can't bring Michael back from the dead. He's been cremated into a thousand pieces. God knows where he is in Atlantic Ocean. I don't know where. So how do I get those needs met without having to bring Michael back from the dead? And if you deliberately focus on how you can foster that in a piecemeal sort of way, you can create a life where all of your needs are met and create a very satisfying life experience. But it requires a lot of thinking. Right. That's so cool. It makes it sound like it's a choice, but it's not a choice like you wake up one day like, hey, I'm happy. But it's it's work. You you work toward it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's so interesting that you took a step back and actually thought. How can I do the work? I think people think whenever you look at something logically, it takes away from it. But I think it's okay to you can merge logic and emotion sometimes together. Empowerment. I was I trained in empowerment for like 15 years. It's an empowerment world is mostly about getting places, career, success, relationship, communication. But I hit a point where I was like, I can't apply that to a broken heart. Like, what's the end goal there? Like, there's nothing that I can achieve in this world that's going to help me mend my broken heart. So the end result must be emotion. So I use those clinical techniques into the end result of emotion. And I think that's what I want to help people do that. And Mm -hmm. yeah, it makes me very happy to do it. (laughs) All right. So what do you guys think? Should we get into it? Let's do it. Word up. Here are the facts. So I've been intrigued about this topic ever since I wrote an article about it on an Asian American blog called Eight Asians back in 2010. There are people out there who really think Asians are the descendants of the gray aliens. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Koji, you're the first person to ever tell me about this. And I was like blown away. I never heard it before. It was so crazy. Uh, First, what are the gray aliens? Here's the Wikipedia description. Grays are typically depicted as gray-skinned, diminutive humanoid beings that possess reduced forms or completely lack uh, external human body parts such as noses, ears, or sex organs. Their bodies are usually depicted as being elongated, having a small chest, and lacking in muscular definition and visible skeletal structure. Uh, Their legs are depicted as being shorter and jointed differently from humans, with limbs proportionately different from a human. 
Greys are depicted as having unusually large heads in proportion to their bodies with no hair on the body and no noticeable outer ears or noses, sometimes with small openings or orifices for ears, nostrils, and mouths. In drawings, greys are almost always shown with very large, opaque, black eyes. They're frequently described as shorter than average adult humans. So why do some people think gray aliens are descendants of Asians? Well, most are based on outdated Asian stereotypes. So here's a few. Asians are good at math and science. So obviously grays are as well because they're all technologically advanced and stuff, right? And then Asians aren't tall. They have no body hair. Obviously, grays are depicted as short and without body hair. Asian languages are hard and weird. Obviously, the grays language would be that way. <laughs> In comparison to what? Because uh, English is so easy. I learned right. English. I learned English. English does not make sense, okay? Like, what? what is the K in front of the no? <laughs> Hardest language in the world, English, right? Right? Yeah, but, it and is, plus, right? it's not like a there's not like a bunch of Chinese people in China that don't speak Chinese. <laughs> it's not hard for them because yeah. they learned it from when they were kids. You know, mm-hmm. I do think that kanji is hard though. Kanji, that's hard. Yeah, yeah, the, the writing. Like yeah, what? Yeah. I don't know. It's like a drawing each or something. Mm. There's patterns to it, but yeah, it's there's a lot. They learn like I think when you're a kid, you learn like 30 new ones a week or something, something ridiculous. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. And you know, and you know why Asians are good at math. I actually did research on this. Why? Okay. So in Asia, the rice harvest, you know, and so in a lot of Asian countries, like, and also industriousness. So in order to harvest rice, you have to get up early and then do things at his early time. And then do things like throughout the day. It takes a lot of work to harvest rice, right? And also, there's a way in which you have to be organized, like row one, row two, row three, row four, row five, and then do the other way, row one. So there's a, a ingrained calculate kind of thing that we uh, like in the 1800s and you know before industrialization kind of had to follow in order to so it was like a way of life like you get up early in the morning and then you do the harvest and you have to be segmented and organized in order for you to succeed otherwise you would starve so there is an explanation to industriousness as well as mathematics. You know, I, I think what's important to East Asians or Asians in general is different than what's important h- here in the West. So, for example, like in America and the West, they talk a lot about reading bedtime stories at night. Like in Asia, they typically do math kind of math games. So mm. it's a very different kind of like what's important is like right. being creative here, telling stories, listening to stories, narrative is very important. Whereas in Asia, it's like, you know, you do math problems instead. So it's a very, yeah. I think it's a very different just kind of mindset. In Korea, they literally gave me a gift. Like, you know, those magnet things where you draw and like, you know, you, you draw like a mat and then it makes drawings. Etch-a-sketch. Mm-hmm. Etch-a-sketch. Here they call it etch-a-sketch. In Korea, they call it math doctor that's the name of the toy (laughs) math doctor that's what i got as a kid so you're right koji (laughs) and i'm really good at math actually (laughs) nice it was difficult to find a lot on this subject much of the quote evidence that i found in my original article in 2010 is now gone but i found this possible explanation for why people have connected asians and grays so back in world war ii there was this these unmanned Japanese hydrogen balloons. They're called Fugo balloons that Japan sent to bomb the continental United States. And this is true so far, but the rest is is not true at all. So um, some have speculated that there were an ex- experimental balloon glider that actually had Japanese people in it. And when it crashed, people on the ground assumed the dead people they found were actually aliens from out of space. And uh, this is actually a crazy thing I'll, I'll share real quick is that aliens that they found in the Roswell crash was actually mentally challenged special needs individuals from Russia. So the idea is that Stalin, he saw how freaked out we got when uh, the War of the Worlds with Orson Welles came out. He thought, what if we send aliens over there and he put people who were, people were challenged, he would put, he put them in there. And then they, uh, and when people found them, they're like, oh my God, these are aliens. It's kind of crazy, but I'm just wanted to share that. <laughs> That's wow. This was all we could find until we found this Twitter post from 2017. This is a little weird. It says Bruce Lee was probably a reptilian hybrid. Of course. The Asians are well known for their dominance in the martial arts. This can be attributed to the superior uh, physiology the reptilians have and passed down to them. 
The Asians can excel in any physical activity they choose. They have the genes for it. Bruce Lee himself was probably a, re a reptilian hybrid. When his philosophies became more anti-government, they got rid of him. Duh. And when his son started asking questions, they got rid of him too. It's very interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's like those old Kung Fu movies when you were like, tiger style, you know, lizard style, you know. <laughs> uh, which got us thinking, maybe we were wrong. Maybe Asians aren't greys, but reptilians. So we did an internet search. We came upon this page. We're not going to summarize it. We're just going to read it all because it's, it's just too good. The link to the page will be shown in, in our notes. Chinese dragons are legendary creatures that are often referred to in Chinese mythology. But are they really myths? Like all myths and tales, there is some truth within. The father reptilian, the one who created the Asian race, was Emperor Huang Ti, who is also known as the Yellow Emperor. This is 2697 B.C. to 2597 B.C. He has been said to have lived 100 to 400 years of age. When he died, he transformed into an etheric dragon and flew to the realms of the immortals, perhaps the moon. Because of this, Chinese people often refer to themselves as descendants of the dragon, and with good reason. The reptilians share many physical traits with the Asians. One trait the reptilians share with the Asians are small. I think uh, in the post it, it's outed out, but I'm pretty sure they're going to say chinky, so small chinky eyes. Huh? That, that sound, I think that's the word there. Uh, the Asians are well known for their dominance in the martial arts, of course. They could, this can be attributed to the superior physiology the reptilians have passed down to them. The Asians can excel at any physical activity they choose. I didn't realize that, but I guess we can. They have the genes for it. Bruce Lee himself <laughs> was probably a reptilian hybrid. Wow. Uh, the reptilians are known for being cold-hearted, logical, and calculating beings. Because of their reptilian roots, the Asians are left-brain dominant, explaining their natural abilities to excel in math, problem solving, science, and computers. And I don't know if you wrote this, Koji, but... No, no, I didn't write any of this. This is from the post. They wrote problem solving with an R? Was that sort of like to try to be a jokey? <laughs> no, I, I think they just wrote that. Do you see? <laughs> they literally wrote problem, problem solving. Yeah, they're being not, racist not, within, the race, within their racism. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Anyway. The Asians are obsessed with rituals and ceremonies, <laughs> similar to the Illuminati who are anal about their rituals and dates like numerology, etc. The desire to succeed and be above all others is also a common trait shared between the Asians and reptilians. You ever wonder why the Asians excel so much at school and in sports? It's their desire to be supreme and above all others. Aiden, have you ever heard that Asians are obsessed with rituals and ceremonies is that something you've ever heard before i've, I've never heard that before <laughs> no, nope not my family <laughs> yeah <laughs> our, our only ritual is we get together during the holidays and we're like we're gonna spend time together and then we go to the penny slots and then we split up <laughs> right right and we eat for like 30 minutes and then we split up again that's our ritual <laughs> <laughs> yeah and not, certainly not more than anyone else not it's not more ritual heavy than any other Everyone has rituals, you know? Another thing I take I take from what Jennifer just said, I take to task, is that one of the stereotypes is that we're not good at sports. I know. So it's weird that they're saying sports, because usually, like, the stereotype is that we're nerdy. Yeah. And therefore, we like to be in front of the computer, which is the opposite of an athlete. But, like, are they including, like, dance as a sport? Like, <laughs> break dancing? <laughs> <laughs> ping pong, right? <laughs> because there are a lot of Asian break dancers that are pretty dope. I don't know if they're including that. Aiden, you look like you want to say something. What do you want to say? Or are you just taking it all in? I mean, I do think that Asian people, and this is how I am anyway, in my family, once we decide we are going to do something, we're doing it. Yeah. And we're mm -hmm. doing it well. And yeah. that's it. End of story. The end. Mm -hmm. Sports, computer, whatever. Yeah. Like, it's that game over. Like, you know what I mean? That's kind of, <laughs> it's been my experience. Amy Chua, she wrote the Tiger Mom thing. Okay, right. What, what they actually found from, you know, they found in general that was really interesting is that it's, it's not that the Asians were smarter or better at stuff, but what it was was that their expectations were higher. So, for example, like, it's not that we're going to send our kids to college. It's like you're going to Harvard. It's not like you're going to play baseball. You're being you're going to play on the Los Angeles Dodgers. So the expectations are higher. So what ends up happening is that even if they don't become president of the United States, they become a senator. You know, like it's like because they're shooting so high, they're, they end up higher. Right. I thought this was BS until I started talking to my friend, my kid's friend's parents who are of different races. And you just listen to them. They're like, I hope my kid gets to school. I'm like, mm. oh, really? Uh, I hope my kid goes to a top five college. Right. You know, like, right. I, hope, I hope he's not just playing baseball. He's going to play in the major leagues. Like, this is like kind of what I expect out of him. And I think where we go wrong as Asians is that we start to withhold love, though, when you yes. don't reach those heights. And I yes. think that's when it goes kind of wonky. But <laughs> I agree. I agree. Right. Yeah. But at the same time, 
Like you want to merge some of the Western beliefs, but not all of them. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. you can go the other way and, and give too much love and give 10th place trophies and things like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the Asians are known for their mystical, ancient, spiritual knowledge. The Asians know the true nature of reality as well as the spiritual aspects of the human. Ever wonder why the world's greatest philosophers came from the East? Knowledge of chi, acupuncture, duality, which is the yin and yang symbol, spirits, co- connectedness to nature, etc., was passed down to them from their alien reptilian ancestors. The West has disregarded all of the ancient knowledge as hocus pocus superstition, but the Asians know better. Mm-hmm. Okay. Aiden, what is the true nature of our reality? Because you're Asian, and so you should know (laughs) that. True nature of our... I I mean, none that I learned from anybody Asian. (laughs) (laughs) So I don't know. (laughs) Dwayne, I'm not going to even ask you because obviously because you're not Asian, you don't know the true nature of reality. (laughs) What does that even mean? What does that mean? (laughs) What does true nature of reality mean? What do you think? Unfortunately, only Jennifer, Aiden, and I know the answers already to that question and we can't share with everybody or ask, uh, you know, leave the group. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Asian women. If you were an alien God who could create a woman in your own image, how would you go about it? Um, it is a well-known fact that Asian women are superior in every way when compared to women of other races. Duh. I mean, is it any wonder like white guys, black guys, Indian guys, Asian guys. I mean, everybody wants to hook up with Asian women. It's like, whoever says like, oh, they're not my type. I don't think anyone has ever said that, I guess. Right. I don't know. So anyway, is it because of their superior physiology or facial symmetry, advanced brains make them more attractive than women of other races? Their good skin? I, I don't know. Yeah. Can you imagine the person who wrote this? I know, right? Yeah, where did you get this? Who, who is the author of this site? But uh, sometimes you have to, you know, if you're writing something, you're the hero in the thing, right? That makes sense. <laughs> the proof is in the media, so they say. So the dragons, reptilians, are often used uh, in Asian-based entertainment. The Asians are sure proud of their roots. Also, if you go to, like, Hong Kong, they have buildings with like holes in the center, and those are for dragons to fly through. So it's a thing that they really? keep. Yeah, that's a thing. Like if you look up the Hong Kong skyline, you'll see a few buildings, and some of the buildings have like the the, the, the skyscrapers in the middle. There'll be a big space. I didn't know that. That's so cool. I love dragons. So the question has changed. It's now: <laughs> Are Asian Asians grays or are they reptilians? That's the new question we have to ask ourselves. <laughs> Well, when we come back, we're going to put our minds together and we're going to figure out what really maybe happened. We are always on the lookout for podcasts to recommend to you guys. One of the podcasts that we've been listening to and think you should be listening to is The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysics 101. Listen to this trailer and be sure to subscribe to them. My name is Will. And I'm Karen. And unlike Mulder and Scully, we both want to believe. So we've embarked on a journey of discovery. We've talked to people deeply entrenched in the spiritual and metaphysical world. We've thrown ourselves into weird and wonderful experiences. I even joined a coven of witches. And, wait, you joined a coven? Yep, all in the interest of finding something. Anything. That will prove that there's something beyond this physical. Three-dimensional world we all live in. This is The The Skeptic Skeptic Metaphysicians. Metaphysicians. Join us every week as we explore a new corner of this weirdly wonderful universe. Universe. Always keeping a pragmatic eye on the subject. We don't live entirely in the woo. The woo? The woo. What's a woo? You know, the woo. That doesn't help me. The woo woo, you know. Oh, the woo woo. Why didn't you say that? Pretty sure I did. <laughs> Catch us on your favorite podcast platform. Or across the world on select radio stations. The Skeptic Metaphysicians. Your world will never be the same. All right. Now that we've discussed the facts, let's give our theories. Okay. Here's my theory. Because the question is, are they are Asians greys or reptilians? Or did they come from greys or reptilians? I would say the answer is neither. And here's, here's the thing. Here's what happened, though. The reptilian thing, that's just because I think some humanity, like if when we first started, like I've been to Australia, okay? And when you go to Australia, the wildlife there, you see animals that look, they look ex- extinct. You're like, how could that animal exist? But it's because Australia is its, it's its own thing. It was separated from the rest of the world for so long. So I think that the whole connection to any kind of lizard thing or any giant dragon, anything like that, is because those type of ex- animals existed 
way back in the day and some people remember them and that was passed on so not like we come from them or anything like that just because of the oral tradition of passing down stories when there were things that look like giant lizards some people remember those things and they pass it on and that's why that tradition is still there that that connection but in terms of the grays, the reason why the grays kind of look Asian is because when aliens first came here, either when they came here or when they prepped on their way, they studied Asian people. <laughs> Maybe they, they either, something endeared them to Asian people, either the way they looked or the culture. So they tried to make themselves look as Asian as possible. They were trying to blend in, but they missed. They just got it wrong. <laughs> either, either the intel was wrong or, because these aliens, the natural state of how they look, it's either something too grotesque for the human eye to, to deal with, or it's sort of like a, an energy bubble or something. So they had to take a, as close as, as they could to a human form. And they, they were going for Asian, but they missed. <laughs> That doesn't mean Asian people came from them. They were trying to make themselves look Asian. <laughs> oh, that is good. That's pretty good. Here's my theory. We are actually, a all a Asians are actually aliens. <laughs> we are reptilian aliens inside. So that's why when we're not on camera, not around people who aren't Asian, we could take off our face and be lizards. We were like shape-shifting monsters. You know, have you ever wondered why there could be like 10 massage parlors or like, 10, you know, like uh, nail places in a row, all these kind of how all Asians will hang out with each other. It's because we're talking alien. You know, we can't talk alien around people who aren't Asian. Mm. So take your face off right now. Well, see, I'm already going to get killed. <laughs> for what I've done. <laughs> right. right. So the Asians, I, the Asians are coming. The Asians slash reptilians are coming for me. Right. Well, does this include Indians? Does it include people like from Thailand, Malaysia, <laughs> Indonesia? Like where, where's the cutoff? That, that's a great question. And to Jennifer, Jennifer's a Hapa, so she's mixed. Yes. One drop of alien blood means you're alien. Okay. Okay. Alien blood is super strong. And so, you know, this is, I mean, th it makes sense. I mean, everything that person said is true. We're good at math. <laughs> You know, we do martial arts, we're good at sports, we know the nature of reality, obviously. Um, all of it is true. I mean, it's just, I'm going to say it's all true. And if I end up dead, this podcast dropped the news first. <laughs> Wait, so so we are reptilian aliens. So we're more, we're, we're, because reptilian is a type of alien, right? So we are reptilian. Correct. We are reptilian. Yeah, you you know that already. You're just you're just clarifying. You already know. Why were you so linked with the Greys for so long? What happened there, according to your your theory? Well, we don't want people to know that we're reptilians. I see. Right? So we put out. We started putting out these other aliens, like the Nordics, Bait like and six switch. foot five yes. white goddess gods, and the Greys. We put them all out there just to trick people. But really, we're just we're already here. Like, you know, this is why we you. multiply. So when we give birth, uh, here's another fact. When we give birth, we lay eggs. That's why there's so many Chinese and so many other groups of people because <laughs> Aiden we space. Get hundreds of eggs. <laughs> right? <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> this is wacky. So many doctors would have to be in on it who aren't even Asian. No, no. This is why all doctors are Asian. You know, right. <laughs> <laughs> so mine is that we are neither greys or reptilians it's but the greys and or reptilian aliens that are out in the universe they are going to infiltrate and they are going to crossbreed with asians simply because the two countries with the largest population in the world are india and china and so from far away the aliens when they come to visit us and cross uh, universes and go through a wormhole or black hole or whatever to come, then they're going to go, oh, well, let's just go to China and India first because we'll be able to infiltrate most quickly there. So my prediction is that we will be greys and or reptilian aliens, depending on who visits us first. So this, I guess this means they haven't visited yet. <laughs> so we will be. Interesting. And, and one other thing, Koji, I just want to ask you about your theory. Do like Eskimos count who may have walked across the Bering Straits from Russia? <laughs> okay, well, first, I, I don't think we're supposed to call them Eskimos anymore. I think that's I think that's like oh, okay, twenty okay, years okay, ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My apologies, but but yeah, I, I I think that they are. Although I think the Native Americans don't want to be considered Asian, so they they're probably not. Um, but yeah, the the Aleut people are are definitely okay. Yeah, okay, part of the whole. They're actually very interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So, Aiden, what is your theory? My theory is that 
Asians are not reptilians and greys, but you know who are? Icelandics. For sure, Icelandics are <laughs> greys. I mean, Bjork, <laughs> right? It's like she's like the true form of that. And then so like we kind of look Icelandic, some Asians, you know, we... And so I can see the resemblance, but if you really want to get like, you know, what, you know, a gray or a reptilian, just look at Bjork, you know, everything she does. That is, that is pure <laughs> alien, unfiltered. And so that, that is what I would say. But also we could be. <laughs> Do you want to be? <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is all about like, you know, like conspiracy. I don't know what I don't know. Nobody knows what they don't know. So we could be, or it could be white people that are the That's aliens, true. or someone, like, we don't know. We don't actually know. And some of those things check out, you know? I'm really good at things when I want to be. Do not quit until I get good at it. I'm totally <laughs> smooth, although I'm very, very tall. And, you know, that part about having no genitalia, I, I have a huge dick. <laughs> so little, and then you blow. It's like a giraffe. <laughs> Some of the things are true, but if you really want uh, the the reptilian, um, you know, gray experience, definitely Bjork. Oh my God, that's so good. Okay, so we're at that point in the show where we need to pick the unofficial official story, one that will once and for all answer this question. What do you guys think? So, like, which theory do we want to go with? Well, I want to pick mine, but I don't think I'm allowed. So, I think Koji's is most most closest to mine. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like Koji's. The only thing is that I've known too many Asian people and I don't think that many people can keep a secret. So if you guys are descendants of the reptilians, I don't think you know it. I think only a few people know it. I don't think every single Asian you can't trust every single person with a secret. You know what I mean? <laughs> you've just never you've never really gotten to know an Asian person. That's all. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> That, that's part of our uh, – we're, we're doing propaganda basically. You know, we invite people over and say, hey, look at right. – you know, get to know us. You can even marry us. But, you know, you never really know we're alien until, you know, ever. I want to go with Koji's too because, like, that means that we rule the world because reptilians rule the world, <laughs> right? Like, I mean – supposedly like Mark Zuckerberg and stuff is a reptilian though. So I don't know how that works out, but he is married to an Asian girl. So maybe. <laughs> I don't know, but I just know reptilians are like the Illuminati, right? Basically. So I'm down with that. Yeah. It gets all com convoluted, but yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But I like you guys being greys more, but it's okay. I don't want to be gray because gray – so the gray – I don't know how much you guys know about aliens, but greys are like the worker aliens. They're like the mm. – they're the ones that do the experiments. They bring you on the ship. They're not the like – they're never the head aliens. The head aliens are always the Nordic aliens, like the tall white aliens. Isn't E.T. a gray? No, no. He's not a gray. Yeah, he's just a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, he's a weird mm. creature. I vote for uh, – I vote for my story. What? This – I did not know we could vote for our own story. I take back my vote. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the official story so we're gonna take another break and when we come back we'll figure out the question i'm sure you've been dying to know are aliens real hmm. this month my show comedy invasion 2.0 will be coming out on Peacock. It features some of the best Asian-American comedians in this country, including this month's guests. So here is a quick trailer of that show. But we all come to this country for one reason, as immigrants. We want to marry a rich guy. This is his pickup line. He's like, is it true what they say about Asian girls? I'm like, what do they say about Asian girls? He goes, that your coochie slanted sideways like your eyes? I'm like, <laughs> As a comedian, you're really not supposed to laugh at your own jokes, but whatever. I don't care. I think I'm hilarious. I don't care. Uh, my name is Zhao Ying Summers. Woo! Americans cannot say Zhao Ying. They call me Zhao Li, Julie, and Joanna. Joanna, do I look like a basic white bitch to you? Right? And if Netflix came to me and said, listen, Lynn, we love you. We want to give you a special. We just need you to be more Asian. I'd be like, I already have a special with Comedy Invasion. Thank you very much. And another 
part about Hinduism is that we have a bunch of gods, like a hundred million of them. Let's say a Christian screws up, one slap to the face. A Hindu screws up, that's a hundred million slaps. So this is a true story. My dad tried to give me advice. He like, hey, you do rap, go to China, man. We, they copy everything anyway, you know? He, he, yeah, Eminem, you go to China, you the yellow Eminem, right? But yeah, I should have knew it wasn't going to work out, man, because their parents did not like me, like, at all. Like, main reason being, because I do stand-up comedy. And her dad literally told her, this, hey, don't go out with this guy. He's a comedian. When he gets famous, he'd be addicted to drugs and women. I was like, oh, my God. Your dad believes in me and shit, you know what I'm saying? Like... We dropped the ball, guys, and we haven't answered the most important question. Are aliens real? They, they, absolutely, there's no doubt in my mind that aliens are real. We would be very limited thinkers if we thought that we were the only ones. That's what I think. Well, here, here's the thing. If we are not in a simulation, which is also a, a, a thing that people believe, then aliens aren't completely real mm -hmm. because the universe is infinite, ever expanding. There has to be something else out there. Dude, I hope we're not in a simulation. Hmm. Well, but we don't know the difference, right? That's true. That's true. And, and and don't jump off a building because you think this isn't real. You're still gonna break your leg. So just want everyone to know that. Uh, yeah. I agree. Aliens are totally real. There's just too many worlds out there, like too many planets and universes and galaxies or whatever that their um, possibility of life. My theory is though is that may, they may or may not have visited us yet. And uh, so they're real, but they're coming. They're incoming. What fascinates me about aliens is always how we conceive of aliens is always based on our, our what's going on in our culture. So like before the 19th century, fairies were a big thing. And if you look at fairy abductions, they're basically alien abductions, little people, stealing people, kidnapping people, and then returning them somewhere else later. That's like, uh -huh. that's basically alien abduction. You go to the 50s and 60s where it's like, you know, their brother, uh, space brothers and space sisters, and it's more about Earth and saving mm. Earth. And you go to 70s, 60s, 70s, and you see like uh, experimenting and you go kind of now and they're like already here. Hybrid aliens are here. I don't honestly, I don't care if they're real or not. I think it just says a lot about who we are as people when we when we start thinking about aliens as being real. I do think aliens exist somewhere. I don't know. I, I'm not sure if they've, they've been here before. Like Dwayne said, like, it's hard for me to imagine that so many people have kept a secret, you know, other than Asians and being aliens, of course we are. <laughs> uh, of course. Of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, all it takes is one person to spill the beans and then it would be over. Right. And like, if the conspiracy is so big that like, you know, that entire parts of the government are working with aliens or have alien technology or any of that stuff, then it would be hard for me to believe that all of them kept their mouths shut, even under the threat of death. Right. Yeah, I can see that. You know, and it's the same to the DB Cooper, right? How many people claim to be DB Cooper? <laughs> it's the same thing. Everyone wants to be famous. So if if you knew that there are aliens out there, you would, you know, right away, pretty sure people would come out right away and say it. We need your help to grow this podcast, which means we need you to subscribe and then write a good review. This helps other people like you find our podcast and see if this is right for them. And if you write a review, we'll send one lucky fan a week, a brand new poster for our podcast. Just take a picture of your review, post it on Instagram and make sure to tag us. We'll choose one lucky winner a week until the next episode comes out. All right. So thank you, Aiden, for coming on with us. Please tell us what you got coming up, where people can follow you, anything else you want to share, because we are so lucky that we got you today. So thank you for coming. You can find me at Aiden Park Show, A-I-D-A-N-P-A-R-K Show. That's the same thing on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, you, you YouTube, you know, all that stuff. And you can find my book on theartofbeingyay.com. And uh, catch my special, Comedy Invasion. And season two, episode three, it's called The Art of Being Gay. Ha ha ha. Thank you all so much for listening. There are likely more than 2.4 million podcasts out there, but we're so honored, as always, that you've chosen ours to listen to. So please check out our website, unofficialofficialstory.com for our show notes or to hear our past episodes. And be sure to come back next month because we're going to celebrate President George H.W. Bush's birthday. And we're going to answer the question, was Britney Spears a government agent for President W. Bush? Yeah. That's a crazy question. <laughs> 100%. 100%. There's no doubt in my head. All right, guys. I'll see you later. Thank you, Aiden. Thank you, everyone. 
Bye. Thank you. Thank you, guys.